uh, it's, 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 it's soothing to hear that we don't only need revenue, but we also have stakeholders that are helping. For example, the private sector, as you mentioned, when they invest, but they also mention what they would need from government. In this case, local governments or, sub or county governments to be able to invest, but also secure uh, the investments. The principal secretary mentioned the issue of trust, that counties should be able to build trust between themselves and the taxpayers. And I wanted to ask the National Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Chiprono, to help us understand that a little more. What would trust built by a county government or a revenue system look like for you? Okay, thank you very much. I start by lauding the Kenya Revenue Authority for putting together this third annual taxpayer summit. I think KRA has really shown uh, good leadership in terms of stakeholder engagement and we don't take it for granted that they now engage um, taxpayers uh, in these sort of forums. Um, and I think it's, it is no, um, it's not debatable that the greatest uh, you know, fruit or the greatest game changer in our 2010 constitution was the advent of devolution. Uh, the introduction of 47 county governments alongside um, our national government. The jury is still out about whether or not it's been successful, but I do think that it's, you know, we've seen a lot of development at the county level. I mean, if you travel today around the country, um, there's social infrastructure, there's hospitality outlets, there's counties that have come, shown very dynamic thinking in putting together um, infrastructure to the benefit of its citizenry. Um, but the, like you rightly said at the beginning in your introduction, uh, Mr. Kajubi, th it's only 13% own source revenue that uh, the counties are able to garner today. And we need to understand first what the reason for that such a low rate of own source revenue. The current county government uh, revenue include, um, of course, the grant the f the from the national government on the on the as provided by the constitution, um, donor funding, allocations and um, partnerships with private sector uh, organizations through PPPs and licensing fees from the 14 devolved functions. And you know, some, co some counties have been successful in um, actually being able to move their agenda forward, but I think by and large, many of them have faced very similar um, challenges and um, hence compromising the trust that you have talked about. And one of these challenges has been there hasn't been strong um, legislative um, underpinning of the, their, their revenue sources. Um, even, even, even if we look at the issue of the issuance of wavian, waivers and variations on licenses, many county governments today post in the newspaper that they are waiving taxes if people pay within a certain specified period of time. But the reality is that even those waivers are not underpinned by any legislation. So there isn't any legal underpinning to, to that. We're also seeing very outdated um, laws on property taxation that also compromises trust. And today, I mean, Kenya prides itself as being the Silicon Savannah, and the private sector has very many solutions on how to um, really improve um, collection of, of uh, land uh, taxes. Poorly streamlined licensing at the county level, weak revenue administration, as well as low levels of automation are other reasons for this uh, lack of trust. What are we proposing as Chamber of Commerce? We are proposing that as a way forward, we need to see more automation to improve the trust um, element of it. We are proposing the entrenchment of laws that really underpin all their revenue collection as well as uh, tax compliance. And there needs to be also uh, you know, tax compliance at the county level, um, you know, collaborating with the tax compliance issued by the KRA at the national level. I don't think there has been anything of that nature. So we'll find many tax collector, ta taxpayers will focus on compliance at the national level but do nothing about complying to the counties. Public participation, revenue collection and management, clarity of the mandate of imposing taxation, and also, you know, we need to reduce cross-border trade between the uh, intra-county trade in the country and e-commerce. Most economic history. We've had a very challenging time. And there is a cash crunch in this country. Many businesses don't have money. And we are suggesting to the, to the national government that this, uh, as a way of stimulating the economy, you know, we need to look at a possibility of actually paying all supplier debt. I think before the government embarks on any new development projects, if all suppliers that are owed money at national and county level 
are paid, it will stimulate economic growth. We would also be encouraging KRA to consider the possibility of waiving penalty and interest on those who have uh, defaulted as a result of non-payment um, by their creditors. And thirdly, also to ask banks if they could reconsider you know, foreclosures because you know that Kenya has had a cash crunch this year and we would like to see that they are um, you know, given. Finally, we need to see a lot of policies that encourage SMEs to be able to really take root to this country. And I hope that the, as the president forms a new government that there will be a state department for SME development because SMEs are really the bedrock of the economy. I hope that answers your question. Right. Another round for him. Yeah, it really answers my question. Trust, consistency, and how it can be done. And I think it really uh, augurs very well with what we're discussing in a moment, the governance around issues, the morale about issues, and what administration can do to relate to the tax-paying community. Um, so what does shows that what that shows me is that what we do at the national level can be replicated at the devolved level to improve the capacities of the national counties. Nevertheless, we have an institution that is seasoned and that is KRA being represented by the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes. Is there anything KRA can do to improve the revenue mobilization in counties? If yes, what is that? Thank you, Bwana uh, Kajubi, and uh, thank you, uh, the representative of the PS, for the uh, keynote uh, address, uh, which helps bring out uh, uh, issues uh, that uh, speak to the challenges that we observe with regard to revenue mobilization at the county level. Before I talk about what KRA can do, uh, let me just say this. I, I was looking at uh, the budget uh, approved for a couple of uh, counties, and I was looking at Nairobi, uh, Mombasa, Nakuru, and uh, Kakamega. And it was shocking to see how much is expected to be contributed through on resource mobilization. Looking at Nairobi, for example, uh, is a, nu a number of 55% of the budget which has to come through on resource uh, mobilization. But at the same time, looking at their performance for the two previous years, you see that Nairobi uh, for the year 2015-16, 16-17, they had a deficit on their own revenue mobilization of 23% and 44%. So you see that even as you are expecting to have very huge contribution coming through on resource mobilization, you see that there is a huge risk here that that is likely not to be realized because of the previous two years' performance where about 44% is, is they have fallen short of their uh, target by 44%. And that is, you observe that across all the, the counties, really. Uh, so that really means that there is need and real serious need to address the kind of strategies that would enable county governments to be able to mobilize on resources. Because there is a limit to which the national government can uh, continue uh, to uh, support uh, the county government. And again, you don't want to do it in a way that then creates a dependency syndrome on the part of the county governments. So quickly then talking about, uh, there are several uh, things that KRA could do, and we are already uh, doing a, a lot of this, one of which is uh, in the area of capacity. Uh, I think we've been talking about capacity building right from the first session in the morning, uh, when we are looking at the nexus uh, between uh, governance and, uh, and, and uh, tax morale. And capacity is one challenge at the county governments. And we did hear that the county governments inherited the personnel with very low <coughs> skills from the, what was then local governments uh, at the time. And these are the persons that have gone on to, to put in the very key areas of revenue mobilization. And that's a huge challenge. So what KRA is doing 
is to uh, prepare. We already have uh, a curriculum which is being run by our Kenya uh, uh, Revenue School of Revenue Administration targeting the county staff. There is need to enhance the capacity both in numbers and skills. And KRA is playing a very big role in, in that area. The other area that uh, we've has been mentioned as area of challenge and where we see KRA coming in, and this has also been mentioned by the, the, the co uh, commission allocation, they cited a couple of opportunities for county government, one of which was uh, leveraging technology. And we've talked about automation here. But I think there is now need to take information beyond just count governments having to set up their own systems. You would like to have a situation where their respective systems are able to integrate amongst themselves, but also with other databases within the country. That is the only way you will then be able to ensure uh, proper monitoring of your revenues, because then you have opportunity to counter check each of your taxpayers' profile against what may be held in other databases in the country. So we are encouraging that county government systems be integrated with others, but starting with the, the Kenya Revenue Authority systems, because we have a very rich database of taxpayers in the country. So that's another area that uh, KRA is working on. We already are in the process of um, engaging a number of counties. We've signed a couple of uh, memorandum of understanding with a few of them uh, with a view to and helping them enhance their capacity, but more importantly, to be able to collect for them. There's also the question of uh, optimality, you know, the having the kind of uh, taxes that are optimal. And uh, remember we had about the county governments having just taken over the different streams that were being administered at the local authorities. There is need to reevaluate these streams. Some of them are not optimal at all. And so KRA will be playing a huge role in providing their expertise in terms of forecasting, in terms of developing uh, frameworks that help determine the potential of different tax streams within counties. So that you are putting your resources for revenue mobilization where there is potential, rather than having to put uh, uh, resources in areas that have no potential, but which, besides the fact that no revenue will come in, it also has the bigger problem of having, you know, alienating the public, because you are pursuing revenue streams that are meaningless as far as the community within the county government is concerned. So that's another area that uh, KRA could play a huge role. The other area we are see seeing a huge role is in providing support in what you might call smart enforcement. And uh, the chairman here did make reference to the use of the tax compliance certificates. Uh, we have a very elaborate uh, mechanism of ensuring that persons that seek to do business with government, for example, are compliant with the national tax requirements. And on the basis of that evaluation, we are then able to issue a tax clearance certificate, which then enables them to bid for and get tenders at both the national as well as the county government level. Now, what we could do here is to work with the county government so that we incorporate the need for compliance at the county level as one of the requirements for issuance of a tax compliance certificate, even at the national level. The account governments will have the opportunity of having then to leverage on what then uh, this uh, document provides. So there are several areas that I see KRA playing a role. Uh, and I think for a start, those are just some of those that I could quickly mention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we have a willing, a willing partner in KRA, but an able partner capacity building, leverage the technology, evaluate the optimality of uh, the taxes, and even provide for in compliance as a service to the local government. On my right is Mr. Rishev Bed, 
uh, who has the opportunity to look at this from the international perspective. And I wanted to ask him to help us understand as we try to raise more revenues, we've already seen a gap at the county level. Yesterday when the cabinet secretary was addressing us through Dr. Mwao, he mentioned that yes, 18.2% is what is coming through the national government, but they would want to do more. He actually mentioned that more than 20% is what government would be satisfied with. If we are to work with county governments or local governments, from your experience, is there anything county governments can do to help not only improve their own revenues, but help the national governments collect more? Thank you very much, uh, Moses. Uh, I think uh, first I would uh, I'd wish to start with uh, congratulating Kenyans uh, for taking this bold move of devolution. Uh, and uh, we have heard from Pierce here uh, the way the, the, the Constitution was designed and how uh, it was, it was uh, categorically uh, stated how the revenue will be raised in the county. Uh, we all know that uh, the real development happens in the county. That's where the people are. That's where people want to see the social contract is binding. We, we just heard from the previous uh, discussions about uh, uh, even the morale of paying taxes uh, is dependent on uh, how much people see that the money they're paying goes back to their So the devolution essentially put a, that burden uh, squarely to the county government. And uh, county government automatically would want to say that, uh, you know, if you devolved in the administration then devolve the, the revenue uh, collection as well. Um, but that's not easy. That's not easy. It's not something that uh, you can do. If you take the KRA, uh, KRA has been in existence for years. Uh, and even before that, the people in KRA were in government uh, in the revenue uh, departments for many years. So there is a huge amount of uh, experience there's a huge amount of uh, uh, investment that was done uh, to ensure that uh, Kenya uh, is sustaining itself with the, with the domestic uh, new mobilization. And that is, that is a big, big achievement. Uh, if you take Kenya compared to many countries in the region here, you find that uh, Kenya is always uh, raising enough revenue domestically to cover their own budget. Most of the other countries depend on the donors. You guys have surpassed that. So that's the big thing. So when you talk of devolving the, the, the revenue collection, which I'm sure we, we, the county government would wish here, uh, has to be taken very, very because uh, you, can't, you can't jump into that. Uh, there's a lot of technology that has been uh, uh, invested. There's a lot of investment that has been done. And uh, now uh, the, the most important thing now is uh, how the revenue is actually equitably uh, distributed back to the, to the county. Uh, the, 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 the Constitution has set up the, the formula, and I think uh, we have heard uh, there that 84% uh, is central government, uh, and I think uh, that is uh, commendable, but uh, again, to, for, for it to be really sustainable is to raise the, the, the the other part which is now coming from the counties themselves. So what comes out clearly there, uh, and uh, it was articulated very well uh, by the representative of the PS, is uh, a need for partnership. It has to be a collaborative approach where uh, the county government supports the central government and vice versa uh, to ensure that the goal is achieved. Uh, and for that, you find that uh, there's a lot that the county government can do. Uh, at the county level, that's where they know the businesses. Uh, the KRA will have all the techniques, but if you don't know really your taxpayer, uh, you find that the gap, the tax gap increasing year on year. So the people who can actually reduce that gap is the people who are on the ground. 
So I'll say uh, number one is uh, the county government are involved in the registration of business, so they, they need, they know the, 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 the different economic activities that are uh, in, the, in, the, in their counties, so they need a collaborative approach with the KRI to ensure that uh, KRI is fully the business activities that are going on there the business activities have got a different cycle compared to the, the, the cycle that uh, KRI will have. For instance, KRI will say you pay income tax four times in a year uh, without regarding of your business. But some of the business up there, they're very cyclical. So they only happens twice in a year. So you need to, 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 to devolve a, a principle in such a way that uh, you, they can pay their taxes easily uh, without any hassle and you, you also, so that kind of feedback can be uh, obtained from the county. So the county needs uh, to have an open dialogue with, uh, with the KRA uh, continuously to, es to ensure that uh, they are, are informed of what economic activities are and also what are the opportunities for more, uh, for bringing more people in the tax net. The other area, uh, as I said, is uh, on the cultivation of uh, uh, tax morale. The tax morale is very key in, in uh, make sure that uh, this system works because the county government, if they don't trust, and thank you for, for bringing the issue of uh, trust because it's very important, if they don't trust that the central government is doing the same thing they're doing, they will always undermine the work of KRA in their favor. And that is something that uh, can, can kill the morale of taxpayers because they will feel like uh, what, they're, what they're paying is not uh, really uh, what they're supposed to pay. Uh, so the, there is a need to engage the county government to make sure the county government support the, the, the morale of paying taxes. The, and, and the other area uh, is uh, on the investment. We, we've, we've heard uh, from the private sector here that, uh, yeah, uh, the county government, they, they have to, Im to, to attract investment. Uh, and in, in the attraction of investment, that's when they can increase their tax base. Absolutely correct. But you have to be very careful here with, uh, with uh, competition that can, can result into cannibalization of the tax base. Uh, and this is very important when it comes to incentives that are available in different parts uh, and how the revenue are shared. And that's why the equity sharing at the center is, is probably more ideal uh, and, and uh, way, but that is something that uh, needs to be reviewed from time to time to ensure that. Uh, the, the, the it is remain to be equitable. And the other area that I feel like uh, the county government will be very useful uh, in support of the domestic mobilization of resources is on the enforcement and, uh, and uh, combating uh, corruption. Uh, I've been in the, in, the, in, the, in the revenue authority and I know we have got so many people. I, I had 4,000 people, KRA I think I've got over eight or 10,000 people. So. All, each and every person in KRI represent the Commissioner General when they go to work. And there, when they do whatever they do, is, is an image of the KRI that is being uh, spoiled there. So, so in terms of uh, people asking for, 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 for bribes and corruption, uh, that kills the ability of KRI to, to raise uh, uh, domestic re revenue. So for that matter, the county government can help to be another eye, an ego eye towards those people who have uh, bad behavior. It could be not corruption, but it could be just bad behavior. There are certain area you go, you find that uh, we're not collecting revenue simply because the attitude is bad. Somebody there uh, is frustrating the taxpayers and the taxpayers, they cannot uh, engage with them, and, uh, and uh, as a result of it, uh, they cannot uh, pay the properly uh, taxes. So the, there are a number of ways I could see there that uh, uh, the county government can, uh, can help the central government or can work in collaboration. I don't I'd like the word help because it's not, a, it's not the issue of helping here. It's an issue of collaboration with a, with a, with a common goal that uh, we are raising revenue for the common good so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Another hand for him. <laughs> yes, ably articulated, and I like that. It's collaboration, not helping. And once you have that attitude of collaboration, I believe there will be mutual working together for the common good. There's a point that the private sector raised, 
He said, we are investing. When we invest, we shall help to expand the tax base, which is good. But they mentioned that among the expectations is that we would actually expect to see predictability in the environment. One major area that sees unpredictability is taxation. In this case, we have taxation that is set by 47 counties. The 47 counties may think they are alone, but when they go to tax, they tax one person, who is the taxpayer. So the worry normally is the multiplicity of taxes that may arise when you devolve. So I want to raise a question with the principal secretary, the representative of the principal secretary. How is government guarding against multiplicity of taxes, which may be a threat to the investment, as our colleague mentioned? Okay, uh, thank you, thank you very much, colleague. Devolution is the best thing that ever happened in Kenya. And uh, for now, the fruits of devolution is being felt. However, we're seeing a lot of challenges. One of the biggest challenges is on provision of services. One of the biggest challenges is the fact that these units are being held, I mean, being uh, these positions of governors are political seats. So you will find that the governors uh, make a lot of promises during the time when they are looking for votes. And therefore, when they assume office, uh, they are bound to try and meet the promises they had made. And this is bringing a lot of uh, problems in taxation because the revenues or whatever share they get from the national government is not enough. So they will try to task any border, border they meet on the way. They will try to tax any kiosk, any market. They're bringing a lot of uh, complaints among the taxpayer. So what we've done as a government, we've tried to introduce model tax laws and send to the county assemblies. Uh, what CARE has done in collaboration with the judiciary, we sent these modern tax laws to these counties so that they can look at them, uh, it is generic, and then they can customize to their It has worked. And in many cases, uh, it has reduced complaints. Another thing we've been doing is uh, capacity building. We do a lot of trainings for the county assemblies. We do a lot of training to the MCS to, to show them uh, how, uh, how uh, assemblies are run, how you can be able to approve or to caution on issues about taxation. Provision of services has been a big challenge. Uh, we are also trying to see that, despite the fact that the Constitution says they can get 15% of the national uh, cake, so to say, uh, if you look at what has been remitted, it is certainly more than the 15%. Therefore, that one eases the burden of them doing the collections from down there. So those are some of the actions which the national government is doing to try and cushion the taxpayer on the ground. Thank you. A hand for him. Thank you. I think we've learned quite a lot from the panelists and the keynote speaker. We would love to open it up um, and I think we'll take about three questions from the gallery and uh, we'll see what we can do to the questions. So if you have a question to any of the panelists, please shoot your hand up and uh, my colleagues out there will help identify you.
your name and uh, the okay. question. Uh, once again, good, good afternoon. Um, my, name, my name is Francis Orino. I'm the CEO of Fruit Limited. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the panelists for the very informative uh, presentation that you guys took us through. And I'll go straight to my question. Now, uh, I just wanted to find out from uh, the commissioner, uh, uh, Kerry, uh, as, as, we, as, as, as we are um, actually going through uh, the, the Vision 2030 as, as a country, um, how are you working out uh, integrated, systemized, and, and digitalization way of, uh, of, of online uh, tax return uh, formula? And uh, how are you planning to integrate all this uh, within the 47 counties? I'm talking of Kenya now within the entire 47 counties and having ways on how people can, 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 can file their returns uh, in, a, in a digital way. And, and, uh, uh, and uh, of course, with the challenges of, uh, of sometimes, uh, 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 you know, people filing returns online within suburb and rural areas, how, how are you going to like help work out an integrated and a systemized and digitalized way of doing things. Thank you. Another question? As we wait, um, I think Commissioner Korongo may. Thank you, um, uh, uh, Francis. Um, it, it is a very deliberate uh, uh, move uh, of a Kenya Revenue Authority to transform, uh, and uh, I won't go into the details of the many components of the transformation agenda that uh, Kenya Revenue Authority is currently driving. But if I restrict to what you said with regard to digitalization in terms of uh, providing uh, uh, online services uh, to the public, including in far-flung areas of the country, one of the things we've done and you you may be aware, is that uh, we have partnered with the Ministry of Devolution and uh, we have presence as Kenya Revenue Authority in every one of the Huduma centers that is currently running in the country. Uh, and we have purposed to be at every one of the Huduma centers that will be put up. And as you may well know, is that Huduma centers are going to be done across the whole country, not only at county level, but it will go beyond the county and go into other smaller areas within the county government. So KRA has got a presence there. The other uh, thing that we've done is to have our uh, ITAX support centers, which provide support to members of the public with regard to the use of our online platform which is our killer flagship uh, platform for Kenya Revenue Authority. We have very uh, well-trained young people uh, that are serving in those ITAC support centers across the country. Right now, I think we have upward 30 ITAC support centers uh, in the country just to facilitate members of the public that may want to file their returns and they find any challenges in doing so. Besides the ITAC support centers that we are creating and our presence in Huduma centers across the country, we also are making sure that we have physical presence in all county governments. I think up to about uh, three years back, Kenya Revenue Authority and in particular domestic taxes had presence in less than 20 counties. I think we are in present in about 35 counties now and the idea is to have presence in all the 47 counties by the year 2018, June, having physical presence. It won't matter that we, it's, it's what is going to be important is the level of presence. You have to have a presence so that we have our trained young people 
present in every county of this country to be able to provide support. Uh, of course, we are also making sure that uh, as we develop our systems as KRA, whether it's for customs purposes or for domestic tax purposes, we are integrating those systems. Besides also having to integrate with the main uh, government uh, IFMI system. Now, I did talk about the MOUs that we've signed with a couple of counties. One of the components within that MOU is on exchange of information. And that is, has to be based on uh, having the systems interlinked so we can seamlessly exchange information. So those are some of the things that we are currently doing as Kenya Revenue Authority, working closely with the county government, making sure that we are taking services uh, to the uh, public. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if we do not have any, do we have a question? Okay, one more and then uh, if you have a, okay. There's, Another hand here, so if you give them the microphone, we'll take these two questions and uh, summarize. Hey, hello, my name is uh, Bashir Noor. I'm a student of uh, economics in the University of Nairobi. My question goes to the panel, especially the former Tanzanian Commissioner for Revenue, who said that it's very hard to, to devolve the devolution, I mean to take collection of revenues from the National Kenya Revenue Authority to counties. If uh, I understand my take on this is, I even filed my returns previously in rural areas. So I understand KRA has offices in rural areas and it could as well collect the revenue for counties and uh, just tell them that this is what we've collected and then this is how it can be spent. So if possible, is there any legislation framework that can be put in place so that uh, collection of revenue by counties can be done by the Kenya Revenue Authority. Because uh, during the early, after the elections, we saw there was a governor who got to office and said that he found uh, seven million. We don't know if it is true or not in cash. So I think there is a lot of funds in, in counties in terms of collection and usage. So is it possible that Kenya Revenue can take over the collection of funds for all counties so that we have a clear structure rather than having each county collect revenue and waste? Thank you. Ver be very brief with a question. Okay, um, mm. I'm Waluga Davis. Uh, I'm a tax. I'm a tax student at the Kes at the Kestra Center. Uh, I thank all the organizers of this event and the panelists for the knowledge that they have given us. So my question is, what are the efforts by the national government and the county government to ensure that there is a le legislation framework for a minimum set? of qualifications for personnel who work in the tax collection areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was one more question here. I'd like to take that. Uh, thank you. My name is Mayra Bran, a student of this university school of business. My question is, uh, does KRA uh, evaluate and inspect uh, the county government uh, revenue system within the devolved units to ensure that there are in, uh, adequate internal controls. Uh, if they do so, what is the level of compliance? Because we are sh uh, pretty sure that uh, counties are collect collecting less than what uh, the local authorities used to collect. Secondly, uh, more than 52 thousand Kenyans are working online as technopreneurs, uh, freelancing economists. How does KRA track uh, their income and what are the uh, challenges? Thank you. Thank you very much. I request Mr. Rishi to quickly tackle the first question. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a very good question that I uh, you're saying if uh, KRA they're already in the county level, why not devolving uh, the, the collection? The, the KRA is actually below, even even goes down below the, the county level. It, it's, uh, it's going down to the grassroots. 
uh, and yes, it's collecting revenue in each county, uh, but what, what I'm saying is uh, if you are trying to imagine uh, devolving the collection, it means that uh, you devolve that collection and legislation to the, to the governor or to the county. And, and that means the county will be responsible for, for uh, designing the tax legislation uh, and uh, collecting the revenue there and spending there. Uh, that's, that's, that's a very far away, I would say. Uh, I must be very frank here. Uh, they are, if you take this uh, model, you may, you may equate this model to countries like, for instance, US, where the state has that mandate. Uh, only very few <coughs> union tax, or rather federal tax, but they, there are so many other taxes which we normally know here, like the VAT, uh, are ending up on the state level, and they have their own legislation there, and, and, uh, and our collection is done at that level. So what I see here, uh, Kenya does not need that now. It might come probably 20, 30 years to come. The, the, the expertise plus the technology plus all the other investment that was done in the legislation and whatnot uh, for the KRA, uh, it will be very difficult to say you devolve it uh, overnight. However, your point is very, very valid and important that uh, while KRA is collecting in each and every uh, segment and uh, every county, uh, the, best, the best approach is also for KRA to report statistics by county. I'm not sure if they're, done, they're doing that, but uh, it's better to, to be able to report by county how much you collected in each county, uh, even the, the appreciation, because that's also uh, bring that uh, morale up uh, when the people, they know how much they, they actually contributed. The other thing is uh, even when you appreciate the taxpayers, you need to appreciate to the level of county. They, you, can, you can get involvement of the county government to appreciate the best taxpayers in their counties. Uh, and also what's very important, as we're saying that uh, KRI has got this uh, experience, but this experience was built up. So they have to build up the experience and expertise within the county because in the next 20, 30 years, the counties will be sufficiently strong enough to do that. So, and that needs to be built up. So they, they have to make sure that the, the capacity building is done now. Uh, and as I said, in terms of enforcement uh, and, uh, and uh, combating corruption is also is one area that we can, we can do jointly to make sure that uh, the, 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 jo the, the counties feel that they are part and parcel of the revenue mobilization. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, the question I asked about how the national government can ensure that people with proper qualification for collection of taxes are deployed to collect the taxes. Uh, let me say this. Uh, first of all, you know, the county governments are young and they inherited a lot of personnel from the different local authorities. And most of these staff were ill-trained, in, in especially on matters of tax collection. So what we've been doing is not to ask them to sack those staff, but to deploy them to areas where they think their capacities are needed. And then the Public Service Commission has issued guidelines to the county public service boards on qualification of the various cadre of the county civil service. And that is being replicated everywhere. So in due course, I am sure, especially in this second set of governors, we are going to have a lean, efficient staff. So there will be no worry about unqualified staff being taken to do not only revenue collection, all other spares of the county public service.
Yeah, thank you. Yeah. There were two quick issues. One regarding um, whether or not KRA uh, evaluates uh, the county government's uh, tax systems. Uh, of course, my quick answer to that is no. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because you know that that's the the mandate of of county governments falls elsewhere. How? We are a huge interested party in terms of how county governments set up their systems and how well they are able to run with regards to how they interact and interface with our own system. To that extent, we are interested. The idea is not to evaluate their systems, comparing to seek to supervise county governments. The idea is to collaborate with the county governments so that we can exchange information about levels of expertise. And that's why we talk of on each other's strengths. And to this extent, what we are doing, and I'll repeat that, is to seek to work with the governments through some memoranda of understanding or agreement, which has many issues that we can collaborate about, including evaluating their system. If you go to our standard MOU that we've developed with the counties, you will find that component there. But it's not by way of supervising, but by way of ex exchanging expertise and being able to provide a third eye to them as an impartial team that helps to say, I think your tax system may have a challenge in this or the other area. That is my quick answer to that. On the question of e-commerce, there is no question about uh, the difficulty that all tax regimes are facing in handling e-commerce globally. It, it's not just a challenge here, it's a global challenge. Now, what we have done, again, as a short answer uh, to this, it was to seek to have some legal underpinning action we may want to undertake with regard to e-commerce. And so last year we got a legislation in place that empowers the authority to seek information from anyone, including such service providers as Safaricom, Airtel, and so on. That means we can at any time invo invoking of that provision seek to get information about any service provider that enables persons to transact business through the e-commerce platform. But it's a, a challenging area. It's not an area we would say we are on top of things. But as I said, what we have already is just to put a law in place that enables us to access information that is held by service providers that support e-commerce in this country. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking this able panelist that has ably taken us through this session. And with this, I hand over to our MC. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Moses, for that. i uh, also like to very quickly send a post Mr. Kitoni had to rush out. He's receiving a business delegation. He's already late for that. Um, so uh, he wishes to send his apologies for leaving early. We are breaking for lunch, but before that, allow me to just uh, bring to you very quick announcements. Tomorrow, um, for the morning session, that is between 8.30 and 2.30, we'll be having two concurrent masterclass workshops that will be uh, happening on the fourth floor. So just go to page 16 of your program. You'll be able to choose which uh, class you'd like to attend. So tomorrow, not all converging here, but based on the class that you'd like to attend, uh, all that will be happening on the fourth floor. Uh, that is tomorrow from 8.30 to 4.30, to 2.30 rather, and then from 2.30 we'll all converge here uh, for a plenary session. So lunch will be served at the event. Let's meet again at uh, 2 o'clock. Bon appétit.